This is the Music History Today podcast for September 29th. On today's show, Curtis Blow makes history and MTV introduces grunge to the mainstream. First up, though, on this date in 1930, singer and actor Bing Crosby married actress Dixie Lee. In 1940, the musical movie Strike Up the Band premiered in movie theaters. In 1947, Dizzy Gillespie performed at Carnegie Hall for the first time. In 1954, the Judy Garland version of the movie A Star is Born premiered. In 1956, entertainer Gail Storm's TV show, The Gail Storm Show, premiered on CBS television. In 1959, Little Anthony and the Imperials recorded the song Shimmy Shimmy Coco Bop. In 1961, Bob Dylan recorded for the first time. He played harmonica on a song by Carolyn Hester. In 1963, the Rolling Stones toured for the first time. They opened for Bo Diddley and the Everly Brothers. In 1963, same day, the TV variety show The Judy Garland Show premiered on CBS television. In 1964, the Beatles worked on the songs Every Little Thing and What You're Doing. In 1966, Jimi Hendrix met his eventual bassist, Noel Redding, for the first time. In 1967, the Beatles worked on the songs I Am the Walrus and Your Mother Should Know. Also in 1967, Mickey Hart joined the Grateful Dead. In 1975, Jackie Wilson suffered a heart attack on stage and fell into a semi-comatose state from which he would never fully recover from. He passed away in 1984. In 1976, Jerry Lee Lewis accidentally shot his bass player while trying to shoot soda bottles. His bassist thankfully survived. In 1977, James Brown's band quit after complaining about their pay. In 1980, rapper Curtis Blow became the first rapper to have an album released on a major record label. The record label was Mercury Records. In 1989, Glenn Frey performed with Don Henley for the first time since the Eagles breakup when he made a cameo appearance during Henley's concert. In 1991, MTV premiered Nirvana's Smells Like Teen Spirit video and officially introduced the mainstream to grunge music. In 1996, Alanis Morissette finished her tour of America. In 2001, the Farm Aid 14 charity concert took place. Also on that same day, country music singer Lori Morgan married country music singer Sammy Kershaw and Jennifer Lopez married dancer Chris Judd. In 2009, Noah and the Whale had their equipment stolen from their trailer during their concert in Manchester, England. In 2012, Patrick Stump of Fall Out Boy married his wife Alyssa Yao. Also on that same day, Jared Folliwell of Kings of Leon married model Martha Patterson. In 2013, musician Jackson Rathbone married dancer Sheila Hassadi. In 2018, Kanye West posted on what was then known as Twitter that he was changing his name to Ye. People still call him Kanye, don't matter. And in 2021, a judge in Los Angeles officially suspended Britney Spears' father from being her conservator. In classical music in 1863, Bizet's opera The Pearl Fishers premiered, and in 1915, the Dutch opera performed for the first time. In theater in 1915, the musical Princess Pat opened on Broadway. In 1960, the Broadway show Irma La Douce opened. In 1962, the musical My Fair Lady closed on Broadway. In 1983, a chorus line became the longest running Broadway show at that point with 3,389 performances. The show ended up with 6,137 performances. It is now ranked 7th on the all-time list, with Phantom of the Opera being number 1 at 13,981 at last check. In award ceremonies that were held on September 29th in 1993, Vince Gill was the big winner at the Country Music Association Awards, and in 1994, the Pointer Sisters received their star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Albums that were released on September 29th include in 1971 when the Jackson 5 released Going Back to Indiana. In 1972, Manfred Mann's Earth Band released Glorified Magnified. In 1976, Rush released All the World's a Stage. 
In 1977, Billy Joel released the album The Stranger, which catapulted his career. In 1980, Cool and the Gang released Celebrate and Stevie Wonder released Hotter Than July. In 1981, Carly Simon released Torch. In 1986, The Fall released Bend Sinister. Iron Maiden released Somewhere in Time. New Order released Brotherhood. Orchestral Maneuvers in the Dark, or OMD if you prefer, released The Pacific Age. And Chicago released Chicago 18. In 1987, the Red Hot Chili Peppers released the Uplift Mofo Party Plan, and the Smiths released Strange Ways, Here We Come. In 1992, Stone Temple Pilots released Core, their debut album. Also on that same day, Alice in Chains released Dirt, 10,000 Maniacs released Our Time in Eden, Aretha Franklin released Queen of Soul, The Atlantic Recordings, and Peter Gabriel released Us. In 1995, Rammstein released Herzlied. In 1997, The Fall released Levitate. Simple Minds released The Promised. And The Rolling Stones released Bridges to Babylon. Also on that same day, Robbie Williams released his solo album, Life Through a Lens. And The Verve released their album, Urban Hymns. That was actually two years after they had broken up. The album finally came out for them. In 1998, Elvis Costello and Burt Bacharach released their album, Painted from Memory. In 1998, same day, Joni Mitchell released Taming the Tiger. And AFI released A Fire Inside, with Judas Priest releasing 98 Live Meltdown and Peter Wolf releasing Fool's Parade. In 2009, Alice in Chains released Black Give Way to Blue, Driving and Crying released The Great American Bubble Factory, and Leonard Skinner released God and Guns. Singles that were released in the UK on September 29th include in 1967 when Jefferson Airplane released their classic White Rabbit, The Rascals released How Can I Be Sure, and Procol Harum released Homburg. Meanwhile in America, in 1957, Buddy Holly and the Crickets released Oh Boy. In 1969, country music singer Merle Haggard released his anti-Vietnam War protest song, Okie from Muskogee. In 1973, David Essex released Rock On. In 1975, Elton John released Island Girl. In 1981, Kenny Rogers released Lady. In 1983, Billy Joel released Uptown Girl. In 1993, the Stone Temple Pilots released Wicked Garden. In 2013, the Vamps released Can We Dance. In 2014, Lord released Yellow Flicker Beat. And in 2016, Niall Horan released This Town. Before we go any further, we'd like to tell you that there is now a Music History In-Depth podcast where we go more in-depth on a few of the events that happen in music history for that particular week. The Music History In-Depth podcast runs every Tuesday on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts from, as does our Music Halls of Fame podcast, which talks about a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame along with other Music Halls of Fame, museums, and walks of fame. The Music Halls of Fame podcast drops every Thursday and can also be found on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Now, back to this podcast. Artists who were born on September 29th include singer and pianist Rock and Roll Hall of Famer Mr. Jerry Lee Lewis, also singer Halsey, Les Claypool of Primus, Brad Smith of Blind Melon, violinist Jean-Luc Ponty, TV show theme composer Mike Post. Let us give Mike Post some love here because a lot of people don't remember how popular he was as a TV show composer. He did a lot of the theme songs for shows like Law & Order, Law & Order Special Victims Unit, The A-Team, The White Shadow, Hill Street Blues, Magnum P.I., Quantum Leap. He was also the producer of the Van Halen's album, Van Halen 3. Those were just a few of the songs he actually did. Uh, NYPD Blue, Renegade, The Rockford Files, L.A. Law. Man was a monster back in the day. So show some love because he is, as of right now at least, still alive. He is 79 years old. So 
find them out, show them some love, and wish them a happy birthday. Anyway, moving on. Nick Taylor of Blood Rock also celebrates a birthday, as does Ian Wallace of King Crimson, singer Dee's Sings, producer and singer Devante Swing of the group Jodeci, Mark Farner of Grand Funk Railroad, Mike Panera of Iron Butterfly, Tommy Tate of the Imperial Show Band, folk music singer Ann Briggs, Tommy Boyce of Boyce and Heart, the singing cowboy Gene Autry. Franny Beecher of Bill Haley and His Comets, Billy Strange of The Wrecking Crew, singer Mari Wilson, drummer Bill Rifflin, Brett Anderson of the group Suede, singer Nicola DeBari, also Manuel Fernandez of Los Bravos, Mark Farner of Grand Funk Railroad, John French of Captain Beefheart, and also the Magic Band, Theo Jurgensman of who was a band leader and clarinetist. Also, Alvin Crow of the Red Dirt Rangers and also the Sir Douglas Quartet. Trumpet player Roy Campbell Jr. Susie Roach, singer with the band The Roaches. Singer Mari Wilson. Multi-instrumentalist Mick Harvey, who was also a member of the group The Birthday Party. John Payne of Asia. Pianist Dave Kakowski, keyboardist Ian Baker of the group Jesus Jones, guitarist Tony Foster of the group Olive, guitarist Alex Skolnick of the group Testament, and twins Luke and Matt Goss of the boy band Bros. Artists who unfortunately passed away on September 29th include composer Luther Emerson, who passed away in 1915 at the age of 95. Composer Rudy Stefan passed away while fighting in World War I in 1915 at the age of 28. Pianist Billy Pierce passed away in 1974 at the age of 67. Musician Zapata Jaw passed away in 1991, although his age is unknown. Singer and actor Paul Jabara passed away from AIDS in 1992 at the age of 44. Singer Cheb Hosni was murdered in 1994 at the age of 26. Opera singer John Nash passed away in 1994 at the age of 68. Jazz pianist Sigar Ellis passed away in 1995 at the age of 91. Musician Bobby Campbell passed away in 1997 at the age of 55. Composer Sven Erik Johansson passed away in 1997 at the age of 77. Country music songwriter Mickey Newbury passed away from emphysema in 2002 at the age of 62. Country music singer Wesley Tuttle passed away in 2003 at the age of 85. Singer Jan Danielson passed away in 2006 at the age of 30. Recording engineer and record producer Greg Ladanyi passed away from injuries that he received when he fell in 2009 at the age of 57. The legendary Rock and Roll Hall of Famer Sylvia Robinson of Mickey and Sylvia passed away from heart issues in 2011. Sylvia was also the co-founder of Sugar Hill Records and the producer of the first rap record to become a hit in the mainstream, the Sugar Hill Gang's classic song, Rapper's Delight. Sylvia Robinson passed away at the age of 76. Sabu Cryer of the group GQ passed away in 2013 at the age of 58. Saxophonist Phil Woods passed away from emphysema in 2015 at the age of 83. Composer Dmitry Smolsky passed away in 2017 at the age of 80. Bluesman Otis Rush passed away in 2018 at the age of 83. Record producer Big Jim Wright passed away in 2018 at the age of 52. Pianist Larry Willis passed away in 2019 at the age of 76. Composer Justin Connolly passed away in 2020 at the age of 87. Bassist Rocco Prestia from the group Tower of Power passed away in 2020 at the age of 69. Legendary singer Miss Helen Reddy passed away in 2020 at the age of 78 on the exact same day that legendary singer Mac Davis passed away and also at the exact same age of 78. 
composer Isadora Zabellian passed away in 2020 at the age of 53, and composer Bronius Kutavisius passed away in 2021 at the age of 89. Next on the Music History Today podcast, it is September 30th, when in 1967, BBC One Radio started. 